In today's video, I'm sharing how to effectively clean and protect your camera gear while spray painting graffiti and street art. Okay, that was the fifth take. And this is not a painting video. Surprise, surprise. Hello, my name is Airborne Mark. I am a London-based street artist, passionate about painting origami, graffiti, and videography and videography and videography yeah let's coin it as videography and because as a trade i am a professional videographer i'm combining these two passions and i'm sharing all the tricks i've learned how to make your graffiti street art videos better if you're new here scrunch that subscribe button and all the gear and items mentioned here are linked in the description below this is not a sponsored video but these are affiliate links so whenever you make a purchase i make a kind of a percentage out of the sale so all support is much appreciated this video consists of two parts in first part i show you how to effectively and safely clean your uh, cameras from spray paint and second part is how to protect it effectively now i was kind of forced to make it into two parts because at the end of the summer i decided to leave my aspc based kit for doing my vlogs in poland so I was kind of forced to upgrade to full frame cameras. Just to give you a context, this camera, brand new camera, I painted with it over the last six videos. And this is the state of it. So earlier on in this series, I was telling you about the ASPC setup for my graffiti videos. And I, I still hold ASPC very dearly to my heart. And if you are starting, document your journey as a graffiti artist, street artist, I do recommend you to start with ASPC cameras, not full frame cameras just because I'm a videographer and all my lenses mostly now are full frame I just decide to just switch uh, all the way to full frame camera and this a7c camera it's a entry level full frame camera I've had it a few times and I was really careful but you know we are painting graffiti you get dirty right your camera gear will get dirty you can see I'm not very proud of the state of this camera here you know the lens rings here the record button here especially caked with paint there is some paint on the LCD screen here okay I have a script I need to follow script okay let's get into it how to effectively clean it so we're going to actually take the lens out of the body and I love in this camera that you know when your lens is off the shutter is closed because that is the case not in a SPC camera okay let's put it on the side right so the things you'll need clean sponges right just regular cleaning sponges and with both sides softer side and kind of coarse I, I believe that's the word coarse side obviously you need gloves let's put on the gloves also lighter fluid you wouldn't think it's a good cleaning product but actually it's it says excellent for cleaning removes grease oil stains tar and scuff marks right that's why I, i'm using this product then my second cleaning product to uh, go is rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol it's uh, medical grade alcohol and white spirit for solvent based paint like spray paint so as you can see this brand new camera six murals so what six weeks so you can see you know the, all the damage here just over spray here obviously the record button which is always a hard case you know so this is what six murals six video does to your camera right the body because the screen here well the back of the screen here 
you know the touch screen here which i absolutely love about it and uh, this touch screen is actually one of the reasons i so eagerly switch from aspc's camera to entry full frame camera as this a7c is because this flippy screen is to the side and it has latest auto tracking from sony uh, the flippy screen the best flippy screen on aspc's camera from sony uh, it goes up and it's not that clever but this one is clever and just bear in mind that i'm a sony fanboy right i only exclusively shoot with sony you know this this main camera is actually my brand new sony fx3 my first cinema camera which i'm really proud of over here is sony r3 and this is Sony a7C and then I have a bunch of other this G lens from 18 to 105 absolutely cake look how much how destroyed it is it's just absolutely horrible right and you know these items are not cheap you know it is a bit of a damage and I, I wish I was recording this video early on when I got this camera but the circumstances I had to basically I needed I needed a new camera within a week and then here it was and it took me a while to all or to get all the protectors and so on and so forth which is in part two so stay tuned for part two okay so starting here with with the uh, lcd screen with a touch screen uh, oh one of the things obviously i forgot to mention is these disposable wipes uh, disposable lens wipes these are the only wipes i use because you know whenever i'm painting and i just need to clear something quickly i just use this one off and then if i had like kind of a cloth i drop it often so imagine me painting dropping it on the ground and then trying to clean the lens nah i'm i'm not in a studio when i'm painting so i'm using these bosable wipes and i'm going to tackle this lcd screen with the disposable let me actually do this look at this flippy screen what it can do like Bish, bash, posh. Hang on, this way, that. Oh, absolutely love it. I'm not using much force. Um, it's coming off quite easily, actually. It makes me very happy. It's coming off so easily and it's gone, right? So this is the most valuable part of the body of the camera. I got lucky on this instant and this was actually the background paint. So it wasn't spray paint. There's some paint here but it won't come off here. So with this lens wipe, and that's that what I can do with the lens wipe. I can't do anything on the body here. The second cleaner I'm using is lighter fluid. Mind you, I'm using the softer side of this cleaning sponge. I recommend you test all the cleaning agents you have on the parts of the body of camera uh, where it won't be that visible you know when you won't notice if it decolors it a little bit and there is a slight chance the harder you rub the more discolored it becomes especially on these rubber parts right you need to be very patient here and like at this stage you know there is a damage you cannot just rectify so to speak it, what, what's done and done and i'm just showing you what not to do here right that's a very important thing you know i was very aware of that that you know the, the damage of the spray paint here is you know beyond repair to a certain extent so it is what it is this mainly cleans all the scarf and all the stuff right i'm not touching the lens yet no this doesn't do much okay so it's not working very well here apart from any other non-paint you know residue you would have any tar if you go painting in really dirty places so i'm going to put this aside with the sponge because i don't want to mix the detergent on the on the sponge so let's go for rubbing alcohol and let's go on the body of the camera uh, that's kind of too too much where the rubbing alcohol helps here is some paint on the plastic 
base in plastic, plastic base on the camera, especially the battery co compartment. This is where it's kind of working. So unfortunately, it's loads of trying, lots of hit and miss here. Okay, it's nicely gone. So, you know, you just need to try things and be very gentle and don't start with the most prominent parts of the camera and try not to be very generous with the cleaning detergents here. This camera has some sort of a weather resistance, but not too much. It's a very painstaking process, but it is working just to confirm all these little like paint marks on the edges, on the rounded edges of the camera. They are coming off with rubbing alcohol. I don't know what the like chemistry behind it is because spray paint is solvent based paint, right? You would want to dilute it with a solvent, but what, what I'm trying to do here is to go from the uh, most gentle to the most harsh. So that's why I'm not going, you know, with solvent to start with, just to see what's working. Maybe, you know, I won't need the solvent in the end, but you know, it's actually, I'm very successful here. I don't know whether you can see it in this top view, black on black, but I'm, I'm, I'm having a great deal of success here. And you know, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. That's what I'm saying, I'm getting somewhere. So my main concern is this record button, to be honest and it always will be and i'm still using the softer side of the sponge i'm not going with the harsh one because yeah the harsh one is too much like it you, you can hear it almost you know it's too much i think i tried it on aspc and with the solvent it just decolored a lot i really don't want to go for the solvent but because this is how to clean your camera or how not to clean your camera video, I make all the mistakes so you don't need to make mistakes. Okay, I'm going for the solvent now. Well, it's white spirit. Make sure your room is well ventilated. This studio flat has air conditioning. Uh, so I'm going with solvent here on the metal parts first, very gently, and it doesn't seem to be doing much. Oh, actually, no, it's actually, all the overspray, uh, red overspray, which is helpful, is going off. And I'm still using the softer side of the sponge. And obviously there is a point when you need to know when to stop, not, not to damage it by accident, by rubbing too much or whatever. And the key is to see when all these detergents actually dry and how it discolors or not the body of the camera. Ah, uh, this. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Not touching here. I'm just wondering about this rubber grip. It doesn't seem to be doing much on the most damaged parts. Maybe with the harsher one. No. I can see already it's kind of discoloring it. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Well, you know, I cleaned the maybe 10% of you know, six weeks worth of spray painting. So it is what it is. This is my mistake so that you don't need to make it yourself. But, oh, it smells of solvent, fuck. But at least it gets us to the second part of the video. And it proves a point that the ways I kind of fa figure out how to protect it from spray paint uh, actually so over here there's, there's this kind of a this worries me it's not it's on the back of the f uh, lcd screen and this is like uh, quite a lot of paint i don't know whether you can see it when i'm using the solvent here it actually takes it off but i need to use quite a bit of a force so i'm worried there might be some discoloring there happening you can see on the small bits here, it's going. With the coarse side of the sponge, I'm actually getting a great deal out of it. Because it's like, but I'm still super gentle. Like I'm barely touching it. I'm going more from patience. I know I fucked up my SPC camera a lot, but with this, but anyway, it's, it is a painting camera at this point anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. This is not my work camera. This is my personal painting camera. <laughs> this is a good point to stop. 
Mm, it's not that bad actually here I'm going just to use a bit of soft tissue uh, and I'm going to just clear it gently with this rubbing alcohol you know to the, get all the discoloring and stuff looks pretty horrible you live and learn again made the same mistake twice you can see slightly the texture of this just gone over here but it's not too bad so okay we're just going to give it a general clean so the rubbing alcohol is very safe it doesn't discolor it at all the most stubborn big like cakes of paint almost that's where you need to go with the solvent but like use the solvent only you know in the worst case scenarios and when you do it i guess the gist is and the lesson here is if you need to use the horses holes course not holes if you need to use the coarse side of the sponge with the solvent to get rid of the paint you fucked right so this is too much it's not working so by the time you get to this i would say give up like over here doesn't look bad well, I'm actually having great results with, with the rubbing alcohol uh, on this uh, grip. As you can see, uh, actually, when it's kind of soaked and you work into it with the softer side of the sponge, so it's coming off, which makes me super, super happy. So actually, I'm succeeding here a lot but I'm not going to use solvent here anymore on this rubber because I know it will d damage it greatly that's why I, that's the mistake I did on on my ASPC but here once it's kind of soaked in this rubbing alcohol it's almost gone yes yeah, so I guess you know I'm, I'm kind of doing it only for the second time and I'm learning as we go together you know to so to help you to learn from my mistakes and me fucking up my equipment that's already fucked up from painting graffiti so i hope this video will go fucking viral in our street art graffiti community like the most helpful graffiti video on youtube able mark fucks his equipment so that you don't need to fuck it up and it's super nice it's like I got rid of m most of it. There's only some Molotov Riviera <laughs> dark in those perforated, in this perforated grips, in those dots. There's some Riviera dark I can see, and that's that. Super nice. Look, actually, this is this is perfect. This this worked really nicely. You wouldn't tell. The rubbing alcohol would help. Okay, now the last thing that is a major, major eyesore here is the, the cake on the, the paint on the recording button. Because it's so textured, I brought some cotton earbuds. And again, using rubbing alcohol, I'm going to work my way around this button. Just making sure the rubbing alcohol doesn't go into all the things that it could go. Right, so I need to be kind of very forceful with it, but I know the rubbing alcohol won't discolor the aluminium body. But what I'm learning is like when you rub it so that it soaks, so this rubbing alcohol, and you keep at it slowly but surely, it's, it takes the you know paint off. But at this point, I don't know whether it's the friction or the uh, rubbing alcohol I'm, I'm uh, actually i'm getting some i'm getting somewhere here actually it's working it is working to be honest but it's just like it's taking loads of time i'll be here till christmas you cannot go beyond certain point with cotton buds right so this is my bonus tip this is my secret tip it might be ridiculous. So my secret weapon here is when you go to a chemist, you can get a tooth cleaning tools, like kind of a pick, you know, as you can see, like dentists use this, right? Right, a pick like this. And this is like to remove the stains. In, in one pound shop, like in UK, I don't know whether you have 
these kind of shops you know you can get even this for one pound what you do you just use this kind of stain remover for teeth you know for the little this these like minuscule tiny tiny bits of paint splatter right and you go like this and you basically rub them off and they go this is like you know i've brought dentist tools you you know you can see the desperation here but also like how precise and how you know painstaking this process is you know i'm bringing up dental cleaning tools you know to get rid of all these stains that i could have avoided in first place but no i didn't want to wait with my brand new camera and I just went recording. No, I really, it was happening so quick. I couldn't have done it like differently. So as you can see, this actually works like magic. This is probably working better than all the solvents. Like the more I think about it. This tool is perfect because it's abrasive. It's gentle enough for tooth enamel, right? So certainly it's gentle enough for your camera body this video should get 1 million fucking likes just based on this cleverness of mine this is looking amazing you know it's getting off the places i couldn't uh, like even the solvent couldn't do anything to yeah but you still need to be very gentle and if you fuck it up basically don't try to claim that warranty on it saying airborne mark made you do it this is the best kept secret i finished here just to get rid of all the smudges a few puffs to get rid of all the fibers from the cleaning you know i could spend like literally you know another half an hour to make it super super clean but you know in comparison from the beginning of the video it's a significant improvement look I managed to get all of the paint from the record button, which was a challenge. You know, the damage the solvent did, it was just get rid of, you can see it at an angle, but it's not a major damage. You know, it's a painting camera. I'm super happy with how it went. And now onto the lens. Front of the lens is intact, it's perfect. It's just the outside of the lens that's, really damaged covered not damaged it's covered from paint since you know i use loads of zoom here i'm not going to talk much about cleaning the lens uh, because it's round it doesn't have any like nooks and crannies it should be significantly easier uh, however you need to take your time and you know it's a lens so use the minimal amount of cleaning agent you know, to get rid of it. And yeah, I'll have it as a time lapse. Yeah, so just to show you exactly how, you know, how dirty it is here, covered in paint, and let's see what I can do. <laughs> right, so I, I finished cleaning the lens. It took me about uh, 40 minutes so as you can see i'm absolutely amazed with how well i did before i starting this video i was like i'm you know not very hopeful but as you can see here the difference is quite significant which makes me happy and there's no damage whatsoever uh, you would be actually very surprised how much you can uh, you can you know rescue your uh, equipment by practices like this but in first place don't get to this point you've just seen now look i'm so pleased with this lens it's, it's beautiful this is one of my favorite lenses it's 18 to 105 g lens it's actually a spc lens uh, that was my best lens for my ASPC camera so on full frame it's 1.5 times factor like crop factor make sure you watch the other videos from video graphy series anyway okay let's clean that mess let's go to part two of this video 
Right, as I just finished editing this section, it occurred to me how long the video actually came out to be. I wasn't intending it to be that long. So to find out how to prevent this very kind of damage from spray paint to your own camera, whatever brand, whatever make it is, follow on to part two, which is, should be here. It's probably a good time to subscribe and scrunch that notification bell not to miss out the part two of this video when it comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm.